In this video, we're going to take a look at the first part of the fundamental theorem of calculus. So if we have the integral from a to b of some function f of x, now f needs to be a continuous function on the interval, closed interval from a to b, then we understand that this represents the area under a curve so let's draw a curve here. And we would have some function like so. Just say there's a continuous function. And here, let's say, would represent A, and here would represent B. So we know that the integral from A to B of F, oh, let's label this y equals f of x. So the integral from a to b of f of x would represent this area here. Between a and b. And the fundamental theorem of calculus tells us that in order to find this area from a to b, we could take all these little rectangles and add them all up. But that just ends up being the integral which we can denote by capital F, so little f for the function, capital F for the integral, evaluated at B minus capital F evaluated at A. So in other words, the area under the curve from A to B of some function is equal to the integral of this function, capital F, evaluated at B, substituting B into that function, and subtracting capital F, evaluated at A. So F of B is actually finding, let's use red here, capital F of B would be the area under this curve all the way to the left, to the x-axis. So this is area to the left of B minus the area to the left of A, that would be all of this area. This would represent the area to the left of A. And so if we take the area to the left of B, all this red area here, and subtract the area to the left of A, well, that would give us this black region here the area in between A and B. So this is the fundamental theorem of calculus. The integral from A to B of F of X would equal capital F of B minus capital F of A. So let's look at some examples here now. What if we were asked to find the area under the curve of Y equals X from 1 to 3. So again, we could draw a picture of this. So we know the graph y equals x looks like this. And we want to find the area from 1 to 3. So we're interested in this area right here. Well, let's use our fundamental theorem of calculus here then. So the integral from 1 to 3 with res uh, of x would be equal to f of 3 minus f of 1. So the first thing we've got to do is we've got to find out what the integral of this function x is. So the integral of x with respect to x would be, of course, x squared over 2 plus a constant. So this would then be needed to be evaluated from 1 to 3. And just, and just remember, usually when we're, when we're writing this, the integral from 1 to 3 of x, after we've taken the integral of x, we'll put this little square bracket at the end, and we'll put the lower limit of the integrand here, and the upper limit up here. And this just tells, tells us that we are going to evaluate this integral here from 3 to 1. 
Now, of course, we don't really need the C because when we substitute the 3 in, and now I substitute the 1 in, whoops, substitute the 1 in, so 1 squared over 2, these C's are just going to cancel out every time, C minus C. So we don't even, when we have a definite integral from 1 to 3, we don't need to worry about this C. It would be important if it was an indefinite integral, so if we didn't have some indices here on our integrand, then this C is critical. But if we have a definite integral from, in our case, 1 to 3, we could have really just said it would equal this, because the C's would cancel out. So you don't have to worry about the C. Uh, but we do need to work calculate this out. So 3 squared is 9, that would be 9 over 2, take away 1 over 2, which is 8 over 2, or 4. So I've just found that the area um, between 1 and 3 would be 4. Now let's check this out. Whoops. All right. Come back here. Here we go. Let's, let's check this out uh, geometrically. Let's find the area to the left of 3. So in theory, it should be the area to the left of 3. minus area left of 1. So let's see, the area to the left of 3, this is a triangle. So base times height divided by 2. So 1, 2, 3 would be the base, and the height would be 3. So this area to the left of 3 would be 3 times 3 divided by 2, which is 9 divided by 2. Remember? Here's what we got over here, 9 divided by 2. The area to the left of 1, that would be base times height divided by 2. So the base is 1, the height is 1. So 1 times 1 divided by 2 is 1 divided by 2. 1 divided by 2. So when we're integrating and substituting these values in, that's exactly what we're finding. Area to the left of this number minus area to the left of that number will give us area in between those two numbers. Let's look at a few other examples. How about the integral from 2 to 5 of x squared? Well, we'll have to integrate x squared. So we'd add 1 to the exponent, divide 1 to the exponent. So there would be the integral of x squared from 2 to 5, so we'll now substitute the 5 in, minus substitute the 2 in. This will find us the area to the left of 5. So 5 cubed would be 125 divided by 3, minus substituting the 2 in would be 8 divided by 3. And so the area to the left of 5 minus the area to the left of 2 would be 117 thirds. So if you can imagine the graph of y equals x squared, the parabola and the area between 2 and 5 would be 117 thirds. Now what if we were asked to find this one? The area from 3 to 3 of x squared. Well, we've already got the integral, that was x3 over 3, from 3 to 3, so now we'll substitute 3 in. 3 cubed is 27 thirds, minus put in 3, 3 cubed is 27 thirds, and 27 thirds minus 27 thirds is 0. Now probably some of you, as we were working through this example, would have thought right away the answer is 0. And it makes sense geometrically because we're asked to find the area between 3 and 3. Well, there's no width to this um, area. If we were to graph our parabola, which we know this is just going to be a rough sketch. Uh, there's, there's the right half of the parabola. Um, so we're trying to find the area between, say, 3 and 3. That, that's just a stick, so the rectangle would have no width. And, of course, the area of a rectangle being length times width, or 
or base times height would um, would be zero when there's no width. So that would that would make sense even geometrically to us. Uh, let's look at a couple more examples here. How about if we had this one, the integral from minus 2 to 4 of x squared minus 3x plus 2, say. So we haven't done one with a negative number down here. Um, but let's go through and, and uh, work this one out. So we're going to integrate this thing. That would be x cubed divided by 3 minus 3x squared divided by 2 plus 2, whoop, 2x evaluated from minus 2 to 4. So we'll substitute the 4 in. So 4 cubed over 3 minus 3 times 4 squared over 2 plus 2 times 4 minus negative 2 cubed over 3 minus 3 times negative 2 squared over 2 plus 2 times minus 2 equals. So getting the calculator out here, so you gotta be careful. There's lots of lots of negative signs, but let's work this. Let's work this for this first one out. So four cubed divided by three minus three times four squared divided by two plus eight is five and a third. or you could do 5.333 and um, minus a negative 2 cubed divided by 3 minus 3 times negative 2 squared which I know is 4 positive 4 divided by 2 minus 4 is negative 12 and two-thirds, or you could write negative 12.6666. So negative 12 and two-thirds, which is 16 thirds take away negative 36, 38 thirds. So 16 thirds take away negative 38 thirds. So Geometrically, let's just see what we've done here. I have no idea really what this graph looks like. But I do know this graph here, x squared minus 3x plus 2. I know it's a parabola that's opening up, and it has a y-intercept of 2. Um, so let's just, let's just draw one here. Actually, I think it would be more on this side here. Say it looks something like that. So we had to find the area to the left, or in between negative 2 and 4. So we would have to find this area here. So notice we got 16 thirds. So this area here was 16 thirds. And now we're going to minus the area to the left of negative 2 which of course is a negative area because we really want to add this area and this area together. If we're going to find the area between negative 2 and 4, we want this area plus this area. And look at what's going to happen to our math here. 16 thirds minus minus would become a plus. And so that's going to take this area to the left of 4 and, and to 0 here, and it's going to add the area between 0 and minus 2. And so we would get a total of 54 four thirds. So our, our formula, the fundamental theorem of calculus, works just fine when the indices are negative as well. They'll find the area in between negative 2 and 4. It's just instead of subtracting, like we did here, in the end these questions will end up adding because you're getting the area to the left of 0 
and area to the right of zero, and we want to add those two together. And let's look at what, whoops, let's look at one more example here. How about we do the integral from minus two to three of the absolute value of x? Integral from minus two to three of the absolute value of x. Well, we know that the absolute value of x looks like this. It's the line y equals x where the negative part's been reflected in the x-axis. So really what we have here is two functions. We've got this function here, which of course is y equals x, and we've got this function here, which is the line y equals negative x. So if I want to find the area from minus 2 to 3, so that's this area here and this area here, I really have to split this thing up into two parts. So this is going to equal the area from negative 2 to 0 of this function. So I want the area under this curve, which is the line y equals negative x, from negative 2 to 0, plus I want the area from 0 to 3 of this function which is y equals positive x. So we can, take our, we can take our integral, which was from minus 2 to 3, and we can split it up into different parts. So notice I'm still going from minus 2 to 3, because here I'm going from minus 2 to 0, and then I'm carrying on from 0 to 3. It's just that we had to split this up, because really we've got two different functions that we're, we're going to find the area underneath. And so we would simply go the integral of this, which is negative x squared over 2, evaluated from minus 2 to 0, plus the integral of this one, which is positive x squared over 2, evaluated from 0 to 3. And so we'll start by substituting the 0 in, and then we'll substitute, so we got to be really careful with signs here, so this is, there's f of 0, capital F of 0, putting in the 0, minus, now I'm going to put in the negative 2, so that's, there's still that negative there. So this would be the area of this first part, plus, now I'm going to find the area of the second part. And so this one's a little bit easier because we don't have any negative signs in it. It doesn't look quite so, so messy. But be very careful with your signs. Lots of mistakes get made when negative signs get, get dropped. Okay, so figuring this out, that's just 0 minus negative 2 squared is 4, positive 4. 4 divided by 2 is 2, but there's this negative sign out front, plus... Over here, 3 squared, 9. 9 divided by 2 minus 0. So 0 minus minus 2 is 2. And that makes sense. This area under here should be something positive. 2 plus the area of this piece on the right is 9 over 2. And so we would have 2 becomes 4 over 2 if we were getting common denominators. 4 over 2 plus 9 over 2 is 13 over 2. So the area under the graph of y equals the absolute value of x from negative 2 to 3, this area right here we've just figured out is 13 over 2. So just to recap again, the integral from a to b, or the area under a curve from a to b, as long as f is a continuous function, is capital F of b minus capital F of a. Or in other words, the integral of this function evaluated at b minus the integral evaluated at a.